Hi, this is a unit on absorption refrigeration cycles. And we cover this in our refrigeration and air conditioning class. And it's also a component of your fourth class B exam. Uh, it's in unit number nine, chapter number five. Okay, so absorption refrigeration. So what is absorption refrigeration? Well, let's figure it out. Okay, so here's a traditional mechanical refrigeration cycle. And we have a compressor, and the compressor is going to send refrigerant to a condenser, where it's going to turn to liquid. It's going to go through a metering device over to our evaporator, where we're cooling our refrigerated space. And then it returns back to the compressor. Inside of this cycle, the compressor does a lot of work, okay? It requires a lot of energy. And roughly one unit of energy goes into the compressor for every, you know, five or so units of cooling that we do inside of our cycle. But is there a way that we could have this cycle run without having to spend all that energy on our compressor? And the answer is yes. Okay, and so that's the idea of absorption refrigeration. So a few cycles that allow us to get rid of the need for a compressor and save a little bit on the energy side. Okay, the compressor is very good because it makes our cycle very simple. Um, and unfortunately, the absorption refrigeration cycles become a little more complex. Okay, and so this exercise, I'm going to walk through all the different cycles, and I'm going to kind of explain to you how they different work, how they work, and some of the terminology. Um, I think it's handy if you follow along with me. So I'm going to be drawing some diagrams. Um, I have some templates, and you can either download them off a of blackboard if you're uh, using uh, or you're part of the course. Um, or else if you're just joining us on YouTube, um, I've got a link down in the description, and you could download the template if you like, print it out, and draw along with me. It may be helpful to you. Okay, so let's get started on our, um, our templates. Okay, so the first system that we're going to look at is known as an ammonia absorption refrigeration system. And we've used ammonia, or we've looked at ammonia before, and we know that it's typically used in industrial applications that need very cold temperatures. So we use it to make ice uh, in a hockey rink. We use it for freezing food. So this is something that we would use in that type of application where we have uh, a need for very cold temperatures. So minus 30 degrees might be an example. Okay, so we're going to sketch out this cycle and kind of understand how it might work. Okay, so the first place that we're going to start is in the vessel up here in the top. Okay, so this vessel here. And this vessel is known as the generator. Okay, so this is a generator. And the generator what it generates for us is ammonia vapor. Okay, and, and, and how it creates vapor is inside of the vessel, what I have is a mixture of water and ammonia. Okay, so this is ammonia that's dissolved in the water. So I have a solution of ammonia and water. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of heat to it. Okay, so I've got some heat, and I'll need to supply heat to this cycle. And when I supply heat to it, uh, what happens is some of my vapor starts to come out of the water. Okay, and it's able to make its way into the rest of the cycle. So. I collect it and it's able to move on. 
Okay. So my generator has created some ammonia for me. And that ammonia is then supplied to a more conventional refrigeration cycle. Okay, so we know in a, in a typical mechanical refrigeration cycle, after we've created some ammonia vapor, and it's essentially at a high temperature or highish temperature because of the heat that's been added, um, where it goes to next would be a condenser. And my vapor is going to be turned into a liquid in the condenser and I would need you know some some cooling water or some some heat transfer in and out of the condenser right so we know we need some heat that's going to leave the condenser uh, it's then going to go to a metering device and then from there we go to our evaporator and our evaporator is typically going to be cooling a refrigerated space. Um, and, you know, that might be a typical application of ammonia. So as I said, you know, maybe negative 30 degrees Celsius or something like that might be the, the bottom limit. So how cold it might possibly get inside of that cycle. Um, from there, uh, what leaves the evaporator goes back and revisits the components that I that I was talking about earlier. Um, and what leaves the evaporator, of course, is going to be ammonia va vapor again. Uh, this time at a lower temperature and generally lower pressure, um, that's going to make its way back. So. The cycle as it runs right now, um, I would produce ammonia until my generator started to run out of ammonia. So I need to replenish the ammonia. And here's how we do that. So the ammonia that leaves the evaporator is going to come up. And I'm going to allow it to exit out and sort of, sort of uh, make its way into this upper cavity. Um, this vessel is known as the absorber. And we can imagine by the name what its function is. Its function is to absorb that ammonia into something. And what that something is, is going to be water. Here's where we get the water from. When we drive off the ammonia out of the generator, what's left is mostly water. So we recycle that water downwards. Okay. And we put it into the absorber. Now, generally what we want to do is spray it in so it can mix with the ammonia vapor that's in there and absorb it. Uh, at the most efficient manner. And then what we're left with is down at the bottom, we've got now ammonia that's mixed with a water solution. Okay, And so uh, we now have lots of ammonia that's in that solution. And we would take a little pump and we would pump it up and add it into my upper vessel. So we have sort of this circulation of water. And when it's down at the bottom in the absorber, it's absorbing ammonia vapor and becoming a more concentrated ammonia mixture. And then it's pumping it up to the top where we drive off some of the ammonia by adding heat. And that creates a weaker water mixture. And so we have some terms for, the, for the, those water mixtures. Um, 
so up at the very top, we have our lowest concentration of ammonia. So we have our ammonia here, which is essentially a low concentration of ammonia. And that's what we would consider to be a weak solution. And we call that a weak aqua, oops, a Q U A solution. And down at the bottom here in the absorber, where we have a higher concentration of ammonia, we would consider that to be a strong aqua solution. Okay, so some terms. So we have four new terms. We have our generator, we have our absorber, and we have our weak aqua and our strong aqua. The whole goal of this side of my cycle is to replace the compressor with a pump and some heat. Okay, so we think of the role of the compressor it increases the pressure and it increases the temperature. Okay. Um, in my cycle here, in the absorption uh, refrigeration cycle, uh, what I've done is I have done those two things, increasing the pressure, increasing the temperature by breaking it out into two different components. I have my pump here, right? My pump is being used in order to increase the pressure. And then I'm using heat to increase the temperature. And the good thing about that is that that heat could just be some waste heat from some other process that I may be able to get essentially for free. So if it's left over from somewhere else, this system can become much more efficient if all I'm doing is paying for the cost of pumping. And so uh, I use my pump in this case uh, as I said, to increase the pressure. And just so we kind of see, you know, just like we have a high and a low side for a refrigeration cycle, um, we do the same thing here. We, you know, we have our high side and our low side in terms of pressures, and it's split between the top and the bottom of this cycle.